Whoa. There's a walk-in freezer. And this is the barrier. It's much colder inside than it is outside. There's a huge delta T. And the goal of this compartment is to keep it cold in there and to reduce the transfer of thermal energy from one from out here into there. It's got to have a high thermal resistance. Thermal resistance is given by R sub T. So thermal resistance. It resists the transfer of thermal energy. Now, the other thermal energies, they were, uh, excuse me, the other resistances, they were a force or force-like quantity divided by a rate. Thermal resistance is no difference. Thermal resistance, force or force-like quantity that dries heat flow, thermal flow is temperature difference. And the rate on the bottom is the heat transfer rate. And the units would be like uh, Fahrenheit degrees per VTU per hour, or uh, Celsius degrees per uh, calorie per second, or just about any other set of units you want. You know, have temperature difference over heat uh, transfer rate. Now, something else you can do with this, though. Remember, heat transfer rate across the material, that's what we're talking about with thermal resistance. We've got heat transfer rate across the material is equal to the thermal conductivity of the material times the area times the temperature difference over the thickness. And what I can do is I can take this expression for heat transfer rate and I can put it right here where I wind up with. There's delta T, here's my K, my heat transfer rate, Ka delta T over L. The delta T is canceled. 1 over 1 over L is L, and so I get thermal resistance is the thickness divided by the conductivity divided by the area. Those are my two thermal resistance equations. Now, notice this looks a lot like the electrical, resisti the, uh, electrical resistance. You know, when we talk about resistivity and length and area, electrical resistance was resistivity times length over area. Well, here's the length on top. Here's the area on the bottom. Resistivity and conductivity are related. Resistivity is just the inverse of conductivity. So these are the same equations. Because the transfer of electrical energy is very similar to the transfer of thermal energy. So we should do an example of this. By the way, let's make sure all this makes sense. It should make sense that the bigger the thickness, the more thickness, the more thermal resistance it has. The bigger the conductivity, the lower the thermal resistance. The bigger the area, the lower the thermal resistance. As I increased area, I reduce the thermal resistance. If I have a radiator for a car, it has all kinds of fins on it to increase the area to reduce thermal resistance. Let that heat bleed out. So let's say I've got this wall. The wall is um, two inches thick. Right there. Two and uh, it's got a width of uh, three feet and a height of uh, eight feet. And let's see, what else do we need? We need to make it out of something. You know, let's say uh, we're making it out of uh, concrete, like we did last time. So it's a concrete wall, and that means we have six BTU inches per hour foot squared 
that I have a degree. All right, so my first question is, what's the thermal resistance? Now, I don't have temperature difference. But I don't have the heat transfer, so I can't solve for those, but I can use, it means I, I can't use this equation. But I have everything I need for this equation. So I'll say the thermal resistance is the thickness over the conductivity over the area, which is at 6.0, sorry. Oh, and the area, I'm sorry, i got to calculate this. Area is the height times the width, which is 8 feet times 3 feet, which is 24 square feet. So I've got 6.0 BTU times inches per hour foot squared Fahrenheit degree over Oh, I'm sorry. Did it wrong. See, this is the nice part again about having a working equation. There's a wonder what correspondence. I put in the wrong thing. That shows up. I need that the length up there. The width, excuse me, two inches on top. Connectivity's on the bottom. Six BTU inches per hour foot squared Fahrenheit degree. Now the other place I would have caught that was at the end when the units didn't work out. My area is 24 feet squared, and this is going to be 1 over 72. It's going to be 1.39 times 10 to the minus 2. Now what do we get here? The feet squared cancel out. The inches cancel out. I got one over BTUs per hour Fahrenheit degree. Now, I could write it like that, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring that Fahrenheit degree up to the top. Not the hour, just the Fahrenheit degree, and this is why. It gives me units of Fahrenheit degrees per BTU per hour. And that helps me check to make sure that I got the right answer, because that's units of temperature difference over heat transfer rate, which agrees with the original equation. So that's my thermal resistance. I've got to use the other equation. So let's try. I don't know. Let's do a B. So that's a. B. Hmm. Let's say we've got a temperature difference of 40 Fahrenheit degrees. What's the heat transfer rate? Well, oh, we're doing oh, some physics. physics. Yeah. Excuse me, I apologize. No problem. Don't worry about it. That was Albert Einstein, by the way. Now, but I got thermal got hair cut. I got my own hair. The thermal resistance is temperature difference over heat transfer rate. Now, I know the temperature difference, and I know the thermal resistance. I just don't know the heat transfer rate. I've got to get it on top and by itself, just like we've done before. I'm going to show it to you one more time, though. Multiply both sides by the heat transfer rate to get it on top. Now, i got the heat transfer rate on top, but it's not by itself. I need to divide both sides by the thermal resistance. And now I've got my equation, but I'm going to write it out again to make sure I've got it right. Heat transfer rate is temperature difference over the thermal resistance. I'll have one more time to make sure I get this right when I do the units. So I've got 40 Fahrenheit degrees over 1.39 times 10 to the minus 2 Fahrenheit degrees per BTU per hour. Fahrenheit degrees cancel out. 1 over 1 over BTUs per hour, because that's in the denominator of the denominator. Well, the answer is going to be in BTUs per hour. So that part's right. Now, let's see. Two thousand eight hundred eighty BTUs per hour. 
Okay. So we've got two different forms for thermal resistance. 